Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today, we've read Luke chapter number 12. Now the thing you're noticing again in Luke, and we've been through this about every chapter, I don't feel like Luke could have crammed much more in a single chapter. I mean, this is not simple little one story sections. Instead, this is, and I described it today like, almost like somebody building a, a pearl necklace to where every pearl is strung just kind of back to back to back and then strung around and for us to, to, to carry around the whole thing with us wherever we go that day. That's kind of what's happening in the, in the book of Luke. Now, I want you to remember back though, because Luke is going to do something in this chapter that's going to make us be really like self, uh, self-reflective to examine. He's going to point us to the fact that in our lives, we've got to be looking to the inner part of life what's on the inside, because what's on the inside has every effect on what we're going to do on the outside. Now, if you went all the way back to the book of Luke at the very beginning, Luke is going to start this story talking about uh, the arrival of Jesus Christ. So he's Luke is going to set up the whole story. He's writing to somebody named Theophilus, which means friend of God. It could have been an actual person, or he could just be talking about us as being the friends of God. We don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's the same story. But he's going to start out the story by both by giving us both sides of a story of faith. Now, remember how, and you got to go all the way back to the beginning to now understand what's happening here. At the very beginning of the book of Luke, you've got in chapter 1, you've got an angel, Gabriel, who comes to Zacharias, who is married to a woman named Elizabeth. And the angel Gabriel tells, uh, tells Zacharias that they're going to have a baby. That's not a miraculous thing, except when you realize that at this stage in the story, Zacharias is very much like Abraham in the fact that he's very old. He and his wife are old, and they have long since put behind them their dreams of having a baby. Well, Gabriel comes and says, you're going to have a baby. God's going to give them to you. And Zacharias answered, he says, he says, he says how, how can these things be? I'm way too old for all of this to happen. Well, he's not remembering his Bible history very much because that's how all the story of this actually starts. But what's interesting is Gabriel is talking to Zechariah. Zechariah is talking about how old he is. But in the story... Zechariah keeps on like, how will I know? And, and Gabriel kind of says, he says, listen, you're not believing. And then the, kind of, then the story shifts. So then we find the story of Mary when she gets the information she's going to have Jesus. And she also has a question, but she believes. And so it's okay to have questions, but there's also, you got to have faith. Well, now when you get into the story, you've got people who've got answers like Pharisees. And so in the story, now you've got Pharisees and they are all around and they're chatting and they're talking and they've got legal stuff and they've got thoughts and they're leading services and all this. So, so they're, they're, they're talking, but again, they're not acting in faith. Why? Because Jesus is going to take us through the pearls of the story. He's going to say that the inner life is what matters. Why? Because that's where faith resides. And faith is going to have an impact on everything else because in this story, Jesus starts out talking about the hypocrisy of uh, of the Pharisees of their of their inner lives, a hypocrite is somebody who is an actor who's playing a part. The next thing he's going to talk about, he's going to talk about the parable of the rich fool. He's also going to talk about greed with a brother coming to another brother. He's going to talk about worry. And he's going to talk about how all these things come out in our lives, and we feel like this is a family issue or a legal issue or a or a political issue or a religious issue. He said, no, no, everything about us is spiritual. And so your hypocrisy, what's on the inside, that's a spiritual issue. You and your brother not getting along because you're both covetous and you're both greedy about this bit of land, that, that's from the inside. And by the way, if anyone, if, if, if anyone is covetous, they're, they're never going to have enough. And when two people are both covetous, then nobody is ever going to be happy. And so now you've got Jesus talking about these, these Pharisees. He's got Jesus talking to the, his own disciples about their own fear. Well, where does fear live? On the inside. And so now we're stringing together pearls. You've got, in verses 1 through 3, you've got hypocrisy is the issue. In verses 4 through through about 7, you've got, you've got fear being an issue. See, some people worry more about, uh, more about their life than, than will actually ever happen to them. Uh, Charles Stanley says, God remembers the sparrows 
that end up on the market and he knows their plight and he knows their value. So he knows our situations and he never forgets us and he determines our value. I've always liked that. And then you've got this parable of the rich fool who wants to tear down his house and build bigger and, and just kind of store up for himself because at his core, uh, covetousness is an unquenchable thirst for more. It doesn't matter how much you got, you always need more because we think when we finally get more, it'll finally make us happy. But really, uh, if you're covetous, getting more never makes you feel richer or full, which is dangerous. Then you got Jesus talking to these disciples and he tells them this story about this, uh, about this rich fool. Now you'll notice that in the whole story, listen to the, listen to the word you hear most often. He said, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater and I will store all of my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good. Well, where's the focus there? Again, now it's inward. Why? Because everything is about what's inside. All of what's inside eventually comes out of this moment. And then he's, then he's going to talk about worry. Why? Because some of these people are listening. They got money and they go, well, I, I understand that. But then you got the poor and they go, well, I don't, I don't worry about money because I don't have any. And Jesus goes, yeah, but you worry about something, don't you? Whether it's about clothing or about food. And he says, he says, but remember, all of this comes back to faith. And then he talks about what is a servant supposed to do until the master returns? Well, they wait, they watch, they open, they, they stay alert, they stay ready. And when we start to forget that our master may be on his way, our lives become selfish in the inner life. And the selfishness in the inner life then begins to affect how we treat everybody else. And then we find when, when we find uh, the end of the story, we find Jesus telling the disciples who evidently living in a, like an agrarian society, they grow things, they fish for things, they hunt for things, they, they gather. And so they're, they're always outside. And he says, he says, a lot of you folks can look around outside and you can look at the sky and tell us what the weather is going to be for the rest of the day. He said, but you can't do that in your own spiritual life. Why? Because you're missing the signs in your own spiritual life. And if people were to take spiritual things as seriously as we take like the signs that weather gives us, we would be more prepared for what's coming. So in this chapter, Jesus is really taking us back to the building blocks of this story. Zacharias hears he's gonna, he and his wife are gonna have a baby. And he says, well, how am I supposed to know this? How am I supposed to know I can believe this? And he kind of gets in trouble because his mouth closes up. He can't speak for nine months till they have the baby. And then Mary, she says, well, I've got questions, but I believe. Well, now everything is about faith. Because if faith is in us, then now it starts to have an effect on the root in our, in our own lives about our anxiousness and our fears and our worries and our greed and our covetousness and all of these things in the inner life. And now when you finish reading this chapter, you got to sit back and you got to take a breath and you got to go, good grief, is, how much of that is about me? And then you go, good grief, could it be that I look more like the ones that are being fussed at? than the ones who are getting it right. Because there's greed or selfishness or ego or vanity or conceit or vainglory, whatever it is, hypocrisy. When Jesus is telling these stories, he's not just confronting these people, he's confronting us. So as we read today, let's do the, the work of examination and let's look at what this chapter offers us. And then tomorrow we'll pick up in Luke chapter number 13. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.